Uh, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Mobile World Congress 2021. We are here in person in Barcelona as well as remote. It's a hybrid event. You're going to have the physical space in Barcelona for the first time since 2019 and virtual worlds connecting. I got a great guest here from Google, Charlotte Shukla, Vice President General Manager of the Networking Team, Google Cloud. Charlotte, it's great to see you. Thank you for coming on theCUBE for this special presentation from Mobile World Congress. Obviously, uh, the edge networking, <laughs> uh, core, edge, human, uh, devices, all coming together. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, uh, John. Uh, it's great to see you again, and it's always a pleasure talking to theCUBE. Always and good. Uh, I want to also say hello to everybody from, you know, in Mobile World Congress. Yeah, and, and people don't know your background. You've got a great history in networking. You've been there, you, many ways of innovation you've been part of directly. Uh, big companies that were now known, big names are all there. But now we haven't had a Mobile World Congress since 2019. Think about that. That's, you know, many months, 20 something months gone by since the world has changed in telco. I got to ask you, what is the disruption happening? Because think about that. Since 2019, a lot's changed in telco. Cloud of scale has happened. You've got the edge developing. It's not, it's IT like now. What's your take, Shailas, tell us. Yeah, uh, John, as you correctly pointed out, uh, you know, last uh, 18 months have been very difficult. And, uh, you know, I'll acknowledge that right up front uh, for a number of people around the world. I empathize with that. Um, now, in the telecom and kind of the broader edge world, I would say that the last uh, 18, 24 months have actually been transformative. Um, COVID, it turns out, was a very interesting sort of, you know, driver of completely new ways of uh, both living as well as working, right? As we all have experienced, I don't think that I've had a chance to see you live in uh, 24 months. Um, so uh, what we are seeing is the following. Uh, number one, uh, a number of telecom carriers around the world have started the investment process for 5G, right? And deployment process. And that actually changes the game as you know, uh, due to latency, due to all of the capabilities around kind of incredible bandwidth, right? Much lower latency, uh, as well as much higher kind of uh, uh, enterprise oriented capabilities, right? So uh, network slicing as an example, quality of service, you know, by a traffic type and for a given enterprise. So that's number one. Number two, uh, I would say that the cloud is becoming a lot more kind of mainstream uh, in the world, broader world of telecom. What we are seeing is an incredible amount of um, partnerships between telecom carriers and cloud providers, right? So instead of thinking of those two as separate universes, those are starting to come together. So I believe that over a period of time, you will see the notion of kind of cloud native capability for both the IT side of the house, as well as the network side of the house is becoming, you know, kind of mainstream, yeah. right? And then the third thing, thing is that increasingly it's, um, uh, it's a lot more about enabling new markets, new applications in the enterprise world. Right, so certainly it opens up a new kind of revenue stream uh, for uh, service providers and carriers around the world, but it also does something unique, which is brings together the uh, cloud capabilities, right, around elasticity, flexibility, intelligence, and so on, uh, with the enterprise customer base that most of the cloud providers already have, and with the combination of 5G brings it uh, to the telecom world. Is and those, you know, I'm, I started to call this as a kind of the triad, right? The triad of an enterprise, the telecom service provider, and the cloud provider, all working together to solve real kind of business problems. Yeah, and it's totally a great call out there on the pandemic. I think the pandemic has shown us coming out of it now that cloud scale matters. And if you look at all the successes between work, play, and how we've all kind of adjusted, the cloud technologies were a big part of that, um, those solutions that, that got us through it. Now you got the edge yeah. developing with 5G. And I got to ask this question because when we have CUBE interviews with all the uh, leaders of engineering teams, whether it's in, in the industry or at customers in the enterprise and even in uh, the telcos, the modern application teams have end-to-end -end visibility into the workload. You're starting to see more and more mm -hmm. of that. You're starting to see more open source in everything, right? So 
Um, so, Thanks. okay, I buy that. You got an SRE on the team, you got some modern developers, you're shifting left, you got DevSecOps, all good, all cloud. However, you're a networking guy, you know this. <laughs> Routing packets across multiple networks is difficult. So if you're going to have end-to-end -end visibility, you got to have end-to-end -end intelligence on mm -hmm. the networking. How is that being solved? Because this is a critical discussion at, here at Mobile World Congress. Okay, I buy cloud native, I buy observability, I buy open source, but I got to have end-to-end -end visibility for security and workload management and managing all the data. What's the answer on the network side? Yeah, so that's a great uh, question. And the simple way to think about this is first and foremost, you need kind of global infrastructure, right? So that's a given. Uh, and of course, you know, Google uh, with its kind of global infrastructure um, uh, and some of the largest networks in the world, we have that present, right? So that's important. Second is to be able to abstract away that underlying infrastructure and make it available to applications through, through a set of APIs, right? So I'll give an analogy here. Just as, you know, say 10 years ago, around 10 years ago, Android um, came into the market uh, from Google in the following way. What it did was that it abstracted away the underlying devices with a simple kind of layer on top of operating system, which exposed APIs northbound so that application developers can write new applications. And that actually unleashed, you know, a ton of kind of creativity, right, around the world. Um, and that's precisely what we believe is kind of the next step, as you said, on an end-to-end -end observability basis, right? What if you can do uh, uh, an abstraction away from all of the underlying kind of core infrastructure, provide the right APIs, the right kind of information around observability, around you know, telemetry, instead of making you know, cloud and the infrastructure, the black box, make it open, make it um, kind of visible uh, to the applications, bring that to the um, applications and let, the, let a thousand flowers bloom, right? The creativity in each vertical area is so uh, significant because there are independent software vendors, there are systems integrators, they're individual developers. So one of the things that we are doing right now uh, is uh, utilizing open source technologies such as Kubernetes, right? Which uh, is something that uh, Google actually brought into the market and it has become kind of the de facto standard for all of the container and modernization of applications. So by leveraging those open uh, technologies, creating this common control plane, exposing APIs, right, for everything from application development to observability, you suddenly have the ability to solve business problems through a large number of entities in the systems integrator and the ISV and the developer community. Yeah, that's so that's the, the, the approach that we are taking, John. I love the Android analogy of the subtraction layer because at that time the iPhone was closed, uh, it still is, and they got their own little strategy there. Android went the other way, they went open, went open abstraction. Now abstraction layers are good. And now I want to get your thoughts on this because anyone in operating systems knows abstractions are great for innovation. How does that apply to the real world on telco? Because I get how it could add some programmability in there. I get the control plane piece, putting it into the operator's hands. How do you guys see, and how do you guys talk about the edge service offering? What does it mean for the telco? Because if I get this right, this is going to be in telco cloud um, developer play. It's going to be a telco cloud ecosystem play. It's an opportunity for a new kind of telco system. How do you see yeah. that rolling out in the real world? Great question, uh, John. So the way I look at it, actually even we should take a step back, right? So the confluence of 5G, um, the uh, kind of uh, cloud capabilities and the edge is you know, very clear to me that it's going to unleash a significant amount of innovation. We are in early stages, no question but it's going to uh, drive innovation. So one almost has to start by saying, what exactly is edge, right? Uh, so the way I look at it is that the edge can be a continuum all the way from kind of an IOT device, uh, an automobile, right? Or uh, an enterprise edge, like a factory location or a retail store or kind of a bank branch to the telecom edge, which is where the service providers have not only their points of presence and central offices, but increasingly a very large amount of intelligent RAN sites as well, right? Yeah. 
and then the um, uh, kind of the public cloud edge, right? Where, for example, Google has you know uh, 25 plus kind of regions around the world, 144 you know pops, lots of CDN locations. We have you know few thousand uh, nodes deployed deep inside service provider networks for uh, for caching of content and so on. So if you think about these as different places in the network that you can deploy compute storage and intelligence at, right? And do that in a smart way, right? For example, if you were to run the learning algorithms in the cloud with its flexibility and elasticity and run the inferencing at the edge, very edge at the point of sort of a sale or a point uh, where a consumer is standing, now you suddenly have the ability to create a variety of edge applications. So going back to the new question, what are we seeing, right? So what we are seeing is um, um, depending on the vertical, there are different types of edge applications, okay? Uh, so let's uh, uh, take a few examples. And I'll give you some uh, favorite example of mine, which is in the sports arena, right? So in baseball, right? Uh, when you are uh, in a stadium, and soon there are people sort of starting to be in stadiums, right? And a pitcher is throwing the pitch, right? The trajectory of the ball, the speed of the pitch, where the batter is, you know, what the uh, strike zone is, and all of these things, if they can be in, in, in a stadium in real time, uh, analyzed and presented to the consumer as additional intelligence and additional insight, suddenly it actually creates kind of a immersive experience. Even though you may be in the stadium looking at the real thing, you're also seeing an immersive experience. And of course at home, it, you get a completely different experience, right? So the idea is that in sports, in media and entertainment, the power of edge compute and the power of AI ML, right? Can be utilized to create completely new immersive experiences. Similarly, in a factory or an automotive environment, you have the ability to use AI ML and the power of the edge and 5G coming together to find where the defects are in a manufacturing environment, right? So every vertical, what we are finding is there are very specific applications, which you can call as kind of killer apps, right? In the edge world that over time will become prevalent and mainstream, and they will drive the innovation, they will drive deployment, and they also will drive ultimately kind of the economics of all of this. You're laying out essentially the role of the public cloud in the telco market. I'd love to get your thoughts because a lot of people are saying, um, oh, the cloud, it's all edge now. It's still going back to uh, on-premises. This is not the case. I mean, I've been really vocal on this. The public cloud and cloud operations is now the new normal. <laughs> so developers yes. are there. So I want you to explain real quick, the role of the public cloud in the telecom market and the telecom edge, because now they're working together. You got abstraction, you mentioned that Android-like environment coming, there's going to be an Android-like effect, that, e that abstraction, you got ORAN out there creating these, these connection points for interoperability for radio yeah. signals and the, uh, and, uh, the in transceivers or the edge of the radios. All this is happening. How is Google powering this? What is the role of public cloud in this? Yeah. So let me first talk about generically the role of public cloud, then I'll talk about Google, okay, in, uh, in particular. So um, if at the end of the day, the goal here is to create applications in a very simple and efficient manner, right? So what you, like if you look, put that as the goal, um, then the public cloud brings, you know, three fundamental things. Number one is uh, what I would call as elasticity and flexibility. Right. So why is this important? Because as we discussed earlier, edge is not one place. It's a variety of kind of different locations. If there is a mechanism to create this common control plane and have the ability to kind of have uh, uh, elastic compute, elastic networking, uh, elastic storage, and have this deployed in a flexible manner. Literally, if you think, think about it, like an effortless edge is what we are starting to call it. You can move, workload and capability and run it precisely where it makes sense, right? Like I said earlier, training and learning algorithms in the deep cloud, um, inferencing at the very edge, right? So if you can make that decision, then it becomes very powerful. So that's the first point, you know, elasticity and flexibility that uh, cloud can bring. 
Second is intelligence, right? The whole notion of uh, leveraging the power of data and the power of AI and ML is extremely crucial for creation of new services. So that's something that the public cloud brings. And the third is this notion of right once, deploy anywhere, right? This notion of kind of a full stack capability that an open kind of developer ecosystem can be brought in, right? Like uh, we talked about Kubernetes earlier. So if there's a way in which you can bring in those developer and ISV ecosystem, uh, which, which is already present in the in the world of public cloud, that's something that uh, is the third thing that uh, public cloud brings. And Google's strategy, very simply, is to play on all of these, right? Because we, um, uh, uh, we uh, you know, Google has incredibly rich deployment experience around the world for some of the largest services on the planet, right? Uh, with some of the biggest infrastructure in the networking world. Uh, second is uh, we have a very open and flexible approach, right? Um, so open, as you know, we uh, not only uh, leverage kind of the Kubernetes uh, environment, but also there are many other areas, K-Native and so on, where Google has brought a lot of open um, uh, 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 kind of capabilities to the broader market. And the third is the enablement of the ecosystem. So last, uh, last year, we actually announced uh, 200 applications um, you know, from 30 ISVs in multiple verticals that were now going to be deployed on Google Cloud in order to solve specific business pain points, right? And building out that ecosystem, working with telecom service providers, with systems integrators, with equipment players, um, is the way that we believe um, a Google Cloud can make a difference uh, in this world uh, of uh, developing edge applications. Um, we are seeing great traction, John, um, you know, whether it is in the carrier world, you know, carriers such as Orange, Telecom Italia, Telus, uh, SK Telecom, Vodafone, these have all publicly announced uh, their work with Google Cloud, leveraging the power of data analytics, AIML, and our uh, very flexible infrastructure. Uh, and then a variety of kind of partners and OEM players uh, in the industry, as an example, Nokia, right? Amdocs, Netcracker, and many others. So we are really excited uh, at the traction that we are getting. And we believe that public cloud is going to be a key part of the evolution of uh, the telecom industry. Charles, great to have you on. Charles Shuka is VP and GM of networking at Google Cloud. And I would just add to that final point there that open and this Android-like open environment is going to create a thousand flowers to bloom. Those are new applications, new modern applications, new companies, a new ecosystem in the telco cloud. So. Congratulations, thanks for coming on and sharing your insights, Google Cloud. You guys are about the data and being open. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. Great to talk to you. Okay, so keeps coverage of Mobile World Congress. Google Cloud featured interview here on theCUBE. Really a big part of the public cloud is going to be a big driver. Call it public cloud, hybrid cloud, whatever you want to call it, it's the cloud, cloud and edge with 5G, making a big difference and changing the landscape and providing innovation for the telco space. I'm John Furrier, Cube. Host, thanks for watching.